Atlanta, Georgia. It's At Home with AJ. And now, your host, Anthony S. and Jasmine. Hey. Welcome to At Home with AJ. My name is Anthony S. And I am Jasmine. We are known as AJ. AJ. How you doing? Yes, I'm How you good. Doing? I'm good. What man. a nice day it was today. It was day. awesome. Girl. 85 degrees Summertime. Today. It's coming. And the living is easy. Uh-oh. <laughs> Watch out now. That sounds like another play. Uh, hmm, I tell you. Could be. Me. Everybody, we're so happy. Let me tell you, I want to give a shout out to Siobhan Say What. She was the winner of our two complimentary tickets for our dinner theater show that we're doing in September. Siobhan, congratulations. Congratulations yeah. to you. Siobhan. That's my shout out. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. She got it. Uh, yes. What was that question? What was the question that we, had, we told her? Can you oh, answer? Yeah, I told if you her answer, to email us with the words "I want those, those tickets. tickets," and she was the first one to do it, and, and she, she did got it. those she tickets. Got two tickets. Yes, 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 sir. And we're going to be giving away more tickets as we get closer to the date of the show. So, right. uh, as I said on Facebook, everybody look out for our posts because mm -hmm. uh, we will be giving away more tickets. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, maybe I can win a ticket. You don't need to you win know, one back. I can, I can win a ticket. You know what I'm saying? I'll come, I'll come to the show. I'll bring some people with me. Yeah. Okay, okay that? that's great. Hey, we need that. We need some more. Go click on, go to our Facebook page and click on that picture, the picture to the event. It'll take you right to eventbrite.com right. where you can purchase your tickets. And then you'll see a little green button. Mm -hmm. Click on to that for get, get tickets. tickets. Okay, and just go ahead and get them, y'all. Yeah, um, that's gonna that's gonna be a good time. Can't so. wait to do that. Can't wait to do it. <laughs> uh, it's Labor Day weekend, y'all. It'll be here before you know it. Yes, September fourth. So, come with it. Come with it. Mm -hmm. um, but we have you know an event coming up prior to that. We got summer jams. Mm -hmm. Don't forget summer jams, everybody. That's gonna be a smash. Mm -hmm. All right, June summer jams, 12th. June twelfth. It's on a Sunday. Yeah. From three three o'clock until. It's almost here. Okay, it'll be here before you know it. Bring your A game. Bring your, your if you dance, bring your dancing shoes. If you if you sing, bring that. Um, if you play an instrument, bring your instrument. Whatever. And B Y O B B. And you'll know what that is. Like, I ain't gotta say what it is. You know B Y O B B. Okay. Bring your lawn chairs. Bring your blankets. Okay. <laughs> Just bring yourselves. Bring some friends with you. Uh -huh. We're gonna have a good old jam session. Uh, yeah. We right got here. the food. You got the. Oh yeah. B Y O. Oh yeah. You know, I'm going to be tight. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm bringing. <laughs> um, so that's Summer Jams. Uh, uh -huh. So June 12th, y'all. 3 yeah. p.m. until. Be there. You got any shout-outs, babe? Yeah, I got a couple shout-outs. Um, a really cool, two good people that I know that I really care for. Um, a young woman who works on, on, on my, my day job, okay? Ashley Hardeman. Ashley Hardeman, mm -hmm. uh, she is the one of the cashiers at the parking spot. Shout-out to parking spot. Shouting out to you, Ashley. You've always been there for us. We love you, man. I'll, I'll see you in a few days anyway. Ashley Hardeman, parking spot. And um, got another shout out to, uh, to a, a, a very serious bass player. Um, in fact, we, we all know who, who she plays with. She, he plays with the, with the uh, Heather Hayes experience. Bass player, mm -hmm. Curtis okay. Combo. Um, Curtis. Bass player. Curtis, hey, I seen Curtis a couple weeks ago, bumped into him at the store, hey, we was talking, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, he's a fabulous bass player. Awesome. He's uh, with the Heather Hayes experience, and if y'all don't know who that is, that's Isaac Hayes' his daughter, she's got her own thing going. He's the bass player for her, this guy's out of sight, y'all check him out. Curtis Gumbo. Yes, 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 yes. 
Yeah, those are my shout-outs. You know what? I want to do another shout-out. Shout-out, baby. Go ahead. To, I got the biggest surprise of my life on Facebook. Someone that I knew when I was like seven years old. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Go this shout-out is going out to Grace Fusco from Elizabeth, New Jersey. Girl, I was shocked to hear from you. And I was shocked, and I was so happy. I'm so glad to hear from you, and you're looking good. Childhood friend of yours. Yes, wow. yes, and and please, we are gonna stay in touch, and that's for real. And I'm I'm gonna make sure that I post this show on her page so she can hear this. So Grace, this goes out to you. I love you. I miss you, and I'm glad we connected. Since I was seven, can you imagine? When was the last time you seen her? Oh my God, it's been such a long time, such a long time. Well, hey Grace, you know, maybe she'll come uh, out this way. You never know. Yeah. I hope maybe so. Maybe she'll come uh, so. to Atlanta and she'll come. Hey, come on the show. Yeah. Wouldn't that be See, cool? Uh, Facebook. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> the social media. This is. It can be a very good uh, vehicle for keeping in touch with people. It sure or, can. Or hearing from people you haven't heard from in a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm loving it because I have connected with so many uh, people from my childhood days and, and high school days. All kind of and, folks. Yeah, it, I, I, I like it. Everybody's on Facebook. Boy, I wish mm -hmm. we invented Facebook. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Ooh, we can, will be can you imagine? Hey, Broke. but you know, the thanks to the creator of Facebook, uh, they saw the vision. Yeah. And, um, you know, they connected everybody in the world, so. Yeah. You know, you know I, I heard something on the radio today about um, people going into business for themselves, and, and the lady said that um, you have to have vision. She said before you attempt to go into any type of business, know what it is you want to do, yeah. know who it is you want to reach, mm -hmm. know who it is you want to help. There you go. And you must have vision. We got vision. Oh, we got lots of vision. Yes. Sir. Lots of vision. <laughs> um, got some good news for you. What's the good news? Got a nice piece of good news. It's about a single mother. Um, her name is Melanie Wright. But let me just read the, basically, the, how would you put it? The, the little synopsis. The synopsis I, on I, her. I call them synopsis. Synopsis. Uh, uh, single mother who was considered a special needs student graduates law school. Isn't that something? Okay. She passed the bar. Mm -hmm. You know how hard that is? Yes. Okay. So, and her name is Melanie Wright. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Melanie, I'm going to read a little something on her. Melanie Wright's long road to getting her education and graduating law school was a fight against the odds, but she did it. Mm -hmm. All right. Growing up, uh, Wright was considered to be a special needs student. But as she got older and continued to work hard, she excelled in high school and college, making high grades and even getting into law school. How do you get into law school? Wow. You know, seriously, that you gotta is, be serious. That's, that's, okay. that's hard for somebody who, 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 got who it together. thinks they've got everything together. She got into law school. Oh you got to pass gosh. that bar. Yes. And how many times did they, how many chances did you get to pass that? How many times did they give you? Well, you, to you, pass? Can, you can take it, but it costs. It costs. It costs a lot of money to, to do that. Melody found herself, well, she had no problem. She found herself uh, with a child and in an, in an abuse relationship. And for a time, she struggled to make it through law school as she found herself homeless Ooh. Hmm. or in periods of time with very little money to raise her daughter. Does it say where she's from? Um, it, it, it's it, probably somewhere it, down in there. But that, I didn't, I didn't see. I didn't see where it says she was from. Mm -hmm. Um, but whatever the case, wherever she's from, she made it. Yeah. She made it out of the, out of the relationship. She is now raising her daughter and having a good time. And, she, and she's a lawyer. And she's a lawyer. Okay. And they told her a long time ago, you can't do it. You have special need. Mm -hmm. No. Don't buy into that, everybody, who feels that, well, I can't do it because I'm different. Um, that just basically makes you an individual. Mm -hmm. Okay. A special individual. So you go out there and you do your thing. Man, I don't know if I can pass the ball. That's kind of... Hey, you have the vision. Man. You have the vision and believe in yourself. So, you know, I'm shouting out to to, to, to Melanie uh, Wright. Melanie Wright. Shouting out to her. 
Um, that's some great news. You know, if we can get a, a close up on that, that's the way she looks. Beautiful looking lady. Mm -hmm. And look for the story on Facebook, and we will post it on our uh, Anthony Jasmine page. Right. So that you can check it out. Right, right. Um, I was uh, almost in tears when I was reading this, mm -hmm. you know, because of what she had to go through and everything. And she, um, you know, there's a lot of abusive relationship, and, and somebody's trying to, to get out of one, and mm -hmm. sometimes they can't, and they don't know how, and they're trying to live, you know, the best way they can, and sometimes they have to have children involved, and it's hard when there's children involved, oh, right. because you don't know what you have to do, you know, you don't want, you want to protect your child or children. You know what, that, that leads me to, we had a, a guest on the show, um, around the beginning when we first started doing these shows, and this is J.B. Barnes, and J.B., believe it or not, just recorded a song dealing with domestic violence. He sure did, yep. And um, I just want to get the name of that song real quick before we go into our Ask AJ questions. Um, let's see. Yeah, the name of that song is called Walk Away With Me by JB, the soul man. JB Barnes, um, congratulations to you on, on putting this song together. Like I said, it's so right on time. So everybody go to Facebook and uh, look up JB the Soul Man and look for the song Walk Away With Me. Yeah, I actually saw the video. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was cool. And it's on cdbaby.com also. Mm -hmm. So please check it out and, and download it, buy that song. It's, right. a, it's a great song. Yeah, JB the Soul Man, he, he does a, a lot of great things out here in Atlanta. He was on our mm -hmm. show about a month and a half ago. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, good looking out, JB. Good looking out. Yeah. Okay, everybody. So uh, we have a couple of questions for Ask AJ. For us. <laughs> we still got some fans out there. Okay. Yeah. Um, and he got your key card. He's he saying he didn't want it. He was holding, holding it for you. Ever since uh, it came out. Come uh, on, I don't know if he wants to say anything. Uh, everybody, you know who this person is. You know who this is. So I said person. I didn't say bear. He's a person. He's just like a person. He is a person. He's a person. Uh, little Anthony. Aww. He, um, he helps us out. He was out, uh, again, signing some autographs earlier. <laughs> um, he's talking about, uh, again, doing this book deal, but you got to talk to us about that, Anthony. All right? Because there's some things, there's some legal stuff we got to talk about. Okay? So that's coming. Anyway, we got a couple of Ask AJ questions. We got a few fans out there who like to, who like to talk to us and ask us questions and see if we can find an answer for them, okay? Um, we've got one from uh, a lady by the name of Gloria. That's my mom's name, okay? <laughs> um, Gloria says, hi, AJ. Hi, I'm sorry, she says, hi, Anthony and Jasmine. Thank you. Thank you, Gloria, <laughs> for saying our names, Anthony and Jasmine, for not saying which does mean AJ, okay? <laughs> hi, uh, Anthony and Jasmine. My name is Gloria, and I'm from Brooklyn. Uh, New York. I've been dating my boyfriend since I was 25, okay? Uh, I am now 30, and I'm ready to get married. He doesn't seem to be paying attention uh, to that subject. Well, should I keep waiting, or should I pop the question myself? Mm. Mm. Um, Gloria, that's basically a tricky kind of situation. Um, he may not be ready for marriage. Uh, and no one should ever try to force anybody to marry them. That's right. I'm just being real. Um, if you feel that you waited too long, you may feel that he may not be ready or he may not be the right man to marry. So, again, that's on you. If you need to feel, if you feel that you need to, to, to step off or if you feel you need to pop the question and just hint at him, hey, baby, you know, um, why don't we run off to, to Vegas and get married? You know, some, some, anything. But if that don't work, if he's not getting the, if he's not getting a hint, every, every, I'm talking about whatever you drop, drop on him, that means more than likely he's not interested in marriage. Babe, so, if it's the right person, if it's, yeah, you don't if it's have right, to throw hints. If you it, don't have to ask. You don't have to do anything. If that it, is the man for you, if you are the woman for him, I, I, I did a song called Old School Love, and one, one part of the lyric says, uh, when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing. That still holds true. And if he doesn't ask you, he doesn't want to. Uh, That's just the bottom line. It's five years in, 
and there's no something from him. Mm -hmm. don't, so, don't give ultimatums. Nobody so, likes ultimatums. You know, just do what you need to do for do yourself. Do what's in your heart. Um, if you feel mm -hmm. that he's just not the right one, well then just step yeah. off and just, just you know, just yeah. step off. That's all I can say because he's not ready, uh, and you're gonna and you know he's not ready. He's not gonna ask mm -hmm. you no time soon. You shouldn't have to ask him. You shouldn't have to do shouldn't that. Shouldn't have to do that. Mm -hmm. If you if you're the right people, then it'll happen. And, it, and at if the right you're time. the right two people, it wouldn't it wouldn't matter, you know, whether you were married or not. Just being together would would be enough for the both of you. That w that it, and if it's gonna happen, it would happen naturally. Right, but and, and but her question is that you know he's not even thinking about it at all. Well, it's time. For I mean, not at all. Time to go. You know, time so you got to do for you. Gotta you got to do, you gotta do what you got to do. You know, mm -hmm. and step off and hey. Um. <laughs> anyway, so we got another question. Okay. So hope, well, Gloria, I hope we did. You know, you yeah. That. So that's you know, use your discretion, Gloria. You decide what you want to do. We gave you our opinion. You do what you like. And that's all we're doing so is we giving get, you know, opinions. Opinion. We're not saying you have to follow, take right. our advice on this. You know, this is our opinion. Some people will stay. That's, you know, we don't know. Mm -hmm. You use whatever you think is best for you. That's what you do, Gloria. Okay? Yeah. One love. Peace. <laughs> okay. Ask, um, ask AJ. Hi, AJ. My name is Russell from Marietta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. My question is, I'm a little shy when it comes to asking a woman on a date. Hmm. There's a lady on my job that I don't want to ask out, and I don't know how to approach her. Oh, he must mean that I want to ask out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that I want to ask out, and I don't know how to approach her. Mm -hmm. What should I do? Hmm. You're a little shy. You're shy. Well, you ever heard of Cyrano de Bergerac? I'm going away. I'm, I'm hitting them. I'm hitting them with Man. the. I'm hitting them with the culture. That was deep, though, James. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Cyrano was. Uh, oh, now I wanted to say he was with the Three Musketeers, but I'm, I'm that's wrong. But anyway, he was a guy who was in love with someone, but he was not one of the best looking guys in the world. And, but he was very good with words mm -hmm. and poetry, and and he got this guy who was very handsome to woo this woman that he wanted. He would have him stand out there and, and act as if he was talking to this woman, but it was him, actually. And it was his words uh, that, the, that the guy was using. Right. And so I said all that to say, get somebody to run interference for you. Uh, uh, not interference. What do you guys call it? Wingman or something? Like, what, do you, what do you call I, them, I, Al? What do you call I, I don't those know. guys that, I, that run up there? I, I speak for myself. I don't know. I don't get <laughs> Yeah, shy brother, like in the five hard I don't beats. Get an I don't get an interpreter <laughs> remember, to talk for me. Remember, shy brother. Yeah, yeah. I've, that's, you know, that's I've heard. What you do. I've heard that story that you know he had someone speak for him because he was better at speaking. Yeah, you know than yeah. he was. So he. But make sure. But, you, but make what sure happened? You don't take a did the guy? You, did the guy take the girl? <laughs> did, his, in, this, did his representative get the girl? She fell in love with him. She did. With the representative. With the representative. Wow. But but if you read the story later on in the story, she finds out that it was really Cyrano, mm -hmm. and and her heart went to him because she, she really truly loved the things that he was saying or words, trying to say, and they and they came from him. Okay, so but it, that doesn't the moral work for of the story. So the moral of the story is. <laughs> The, and the moral of the story is... If you get shy brother or, or <laughs> <laughs> someone like Cindy, uh, Cyrano Hughes, make, make sure that... Uh, he don't take your... They don't look all that great. <laughs> he don't take your woman. <laughs> Got our cameraman laugh. I know, that's shy brother First stuff. of all, don't even do that, man. We, we know don't, what happened to him in the five Don't even do piece. that. That was kind of ugly. Because that, in, because you're you're a representative. I call him a representative. Yeah, your yeah. representative can be so cool and slick. He gonna take I your know. woman. He gonna take your woman, and he ain't gonna he ain't gonna say I'm sorry, brother. He's gonna he, just walk until away. Until he get into that hey. situation where she says, "Say that to me again," and he starts to fumble. You know what, Russell? Let me give you a little advice. Man up, <laughs> go out there and just say, <laughs> "Hey, babe, himself, what's bro. happening? Let's go out." <laughs> Boom. There it is. Okay. I hear you. As simple as I that. Hear you. Hey. You know, we, we, well, you know what? How we, how we, how do, we do, right? How we do. You know, I just, hey, that's for another show. Well, huh? I tell you what. I, I we, we didn't rap. I didn't rap. Hey, babe, listen. I ain't rap. For, we have a great guest tonight. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, we don't need a representative for for her. This this lady. Oh, no. I heard a lot about her. Yes. Man, yes. traveling all over the world. 
internationally known. Internationally known. Yes, we uh, are very, very proud to have this this lady here with she's, us tonight. She's big here in the states as well. That's right. Is she as big here in the states as she is? I know she's yes. big. Yes, she is. Big over uh, in Europe. And she fact, just got back from Paris. From, I think from Paris. From Paris. Yes. Yes. Paris, mm -hmm. France. We I want to go to Paris so bad. I know. You think she'll take us? Uh, uh, on, on her next tour. Well, we'll see. We can be a backup Everybody, singers. please, please, put your hands together for Miss Julie, Julie Dexter. <laughs> <laughs> there she is, Julie. Good to see you. Good to see you, sir. Julie Dexter, there you go, everybody. Yeah. Happy to see you. Oh, man. Julie <laughs> Dexter is in the house. Cozy in here. <laughs> this flew in from Paris. Paris. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. What's, yeah, what's, yeah. what's that? My French is terrible. terrible. Ladies and gentlemen. No. Je ne comprends pas. You see? You see? You see? <laughs> I can only say Polly before I say Okay. I love it. It's just like Morticia every time. Uh, <laughs> Her other twerk to her. It just goes, just goosebumps everywhere. The fabulous Julie Dexter. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Welcome. Hey. Hey. Julie. Hey, Julie, come on. You gotta, this is little Anthony, so you gotta feel his ears. I, oh, I know you heard about little Anthony. Anthony. <laughs> I know you heard he was, oh, he's kind of not He looked like he's trying to. What's up, Anthony? You good? <laughs> he got all spruce up just for you. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. He's been Aww. hanging out with the most, I see. Yeah. He's been hanging out with us since this the show started. This is our baby, you know. This little aunt. He's, he's famous. Yeah. Like he's, he's got a children's mm -hmm. book coming. We're working on that. Okay. He's got his Facebook out already. Entrepreneur uh -huh. Teddy, yeah. I like it. <laughs> yeah, so friend, friend him later on. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. on so, Julie, tell us about Paris. Yeah. Oh. Paris was amazing. What's that um, like going to Patty? Mm -hmm. I've, I've been to Paris um, three times before, actually. Mm -hmm. but, um, this is my first time going, one with my mom, because she came with me on tour, nice. and two, my first time seeing the Eiffel Tower, which mm -hmm. is, how are you going to go to Paris and not see the Eiffel Tower, Oh, right? my gosh. Wow. So the first three times I went, you know, you, you get there, it's late at night, and then you do the show, and then you leave in the morning, and to leave from the hotel, like, six in the morning, so there's no tourist time, you know, scheduled mm -hmm. in the tour. This time, you know, we got off the Eurostar, we literally ran to the hotel, dropped off our bags, got in the, into the cab, got to the Alpha Tower in probably like 20 minutes, and we spent probably a good hour, 45 minutes there, and then ran back so I could catch the sound check. So, For the show? Yeah. All so, in one day? Yeah, in one day, oh, and goodness. it was amazing, it really was. I mean, my mom was, both me and my mom were like, wow, you know, this, this is huge, <laughs> just, it's just massive, it's just hum it's humongous. It's so, like, you have to be there to actually understand the magnitude of the size of this this tower, it's, it's huge. Mm -hmm. So in your show, like, I mean, you have like, uh, uh, as far as a band's concerned, or mm -hmm. orchestra, or, you know, what, what do you have in your show? You, do you have backup singers, dancers? What, what do you have? No dancers, you know, no. I'm a dancer, have? just kidding. <laughs> no, we all can no, kind of rock I'm, a I'm, I'm a, What do you have in your show? What's I'm a trio, like? I'm a trio chick, you know, drum, bass, and keys, okay. and I did have guitar as well. Okay. It was a band that, you know, were based in Paris, so I flew in had to get to soundcheck early so I could rehearse with them so mm -hmm. we could go through the songs before oh. the show. So it was on the day. Oh, there was a band from Paris that Yeah, because, you know, we're not traveling with that band yet. That's coming mm -hmm, soon, mm -hmm. you know. So until that point, we travel and we get with the musicians at the, at and the place. And you work it out. Yeah, and we work it out because you send the music beforehand. Okay. So it's not like they're just learning it on the spot. We're just right. really running through to make sure, you know, iron out any kinks and they did a great job. It was amazing. I mean, I've really had, you know, I've been blessed. I've had some great experiences wow. where I've arrived probably an hour or two before the show, mm -hmm. and you know, they do the work, and, it, and it's great. It's, like, see, that's it's awesome. like playing with your band. That's awesome. And I've had the train wrecks where it doesn't work out, wow. too, but I've been more blessed to have the, you know, the, the good situation, yeah. so yeah, Paris was definitely one of those. Wow. So tell me, have, have, have you ever done um, Ronnie Scott's? Yes, I did Ronnie Scott's oh, when I was living in yeah. England back in the day, yes. That's, it's a historical venue. It's like Ooh, doing um, the Blue Note in New York or, you yes. know. Oh, okay. This is a venue called yeah. Ronnie's. Okay. Ronnie's Scott is like, you have to. I, I want to go there so bad. Yeah, it's the history. You can, you know, it's almost like you smell the history. Because, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, the, the greats have been Who on that same stage. Through that yes, place. And, you, and then you see the pictures around and then. And they said it hasn't wow. changed a bit no, since it's, from it's day one. No, it's part of the, you know, the thing of keeping it the same. How people come for that. For that feeling, for the intimacy, you know, it's dark, mm -hmm. you know, you have to it's smoky, the music. Yeah. it's like it's it, like it's, the, it's the, like the blue ultimate note. jazz club. Yeah, literally. Just like the blue you know? note. Yeah, in, in definitely. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Like yeah. the village gate yeah. or the blue note. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
That's awesome. So wow. I haven't actually been there for many years, but the times that I did go, I just it was just nostalgic, you know. And you uh, you can tell that um, you know the history is like I said, what keeps it going because you know there's been some great mm. music mm. on that stage, some oh, great man. solos, and just great amazing performances. You know, just you know, most people if you know, like I saw Betty Carter there. It's like five <gasps> nights. So you wow. know, I went the first night, then I went the second night. Then, you know, you just go every night because it's, it's oh, Betty Carter. She's and she awesome, brings it she? every time. In a way, you're like each time you feel like you're seeing her for the first time. You I know. know. I know she did tight. I know, know she, she did. did. I, I know, know she, she did. killed it. I, I mean, she's just <sighs> one of my favorites. So you know, I'm a fan first, mm. and then mm -hmm. you're just so engrossed in the music, and then how she works her band. She's a great band leader. Mm. You know, she has always, like, every time I've seen her, you can tell she's bringing in, you know, she's bringing the youth, she brings in the next generation of, yeah, like, young Yeah, her, her piano players are always, like, young. Yeah. Like, like, moms, maybe she like young boys. <laughs> uh, yep, she sure uh, do. Green, um, William Green. Okay. Was William he playing Green. for her? No. Not, not, not our William Green, oh, okay. but it's, it's another guy. Okay. So it was young. I can't even remember. Do you know William, the William Green here? You know. The William Green, yes, I know ATL yeah. William Green, yes, awesome. I've played with him. Awesome. Yeah, amazing, this is amazing. another, uh, another uh, William, I who, think his name is William Green, who, but he was her piano player for a long time. Who handles your, your booking? Is your, is your, does your mom, is your mom, your management, does she handle your booking? No, not my you mom. Have an agent? <laughs> my mom, that was, just to tell you, that was my mom's <laughs> first time, like, being on tour with me, you uh -huh. know, she, my mom's been in the audience, she's been watching me from the audience seat the whole time, you know wow. what I mean? She's. She doesn't know anything about the business or anything, so it was her first time. Is she proud? Yes, yeah, she's proud. Yeah. But what was funny was is that, you know, when we got to uh, Paris, we got to the hotel, I remember when we were checking out, she went to, well, don't we have to pay, Julie? I'm like, no, Mom, they pay for the hotel. <laughs> and then, you know, when you go to uh, do, you do a you show, they take care of you. So they gave her the menu, and they're like, Mrs. Dexter, would you like to eat? So she's looking at the cheapest stuff on the menu because she's thinking she's got to pay for You know how you do. Yeah. And they're like, you can have anything you want. And she's like, oh, okay. And then they're like, do you want a drink? And she's like, I have some juice. So they're like, you don't want no champagne? You know, like, <laughs> she just didn't get it. And I was like, right. wow, well, this is the perks of the job. This is where they treat you like, you know, your royalty. You know, you're, you're doing oh, a service God. for them and they're taking care of you. So she loved that. Was your name on, on the, when your photo was outside? Was your name on the yeah, on the market? Yeah, yeah. Did you pictures. take a picture yes, of it? Yes, I did, okay. yeah, okay. on the flyer and outside. And, I mean, it was just a, an wow. amazing experience because she was with me. So she got to see from the side of how I experienced mm -hmm, it as opposed mm -hmm. to just seeing her daughter singing in the audience, you know? Of so, course she had front row seats. Of course. Of course you know, she was right there. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And, you know, people meet her and then it's like, oh, you're Julie's mom. Oh, you're so beautiful. Oh, yeah, your daughter, <laughs> she's so, you know. So all of that, she's just oh, sitting there loving it. So that gave me the most joy. Yeah. You know, it's taken a long time for me to get to the point where I can bring her on tour. I was like, I'll buy her a ticket. And, and bring her, and she was like, I'm coming to Paris, you're not going without me. I was like, come on, mom, let's go to Paris. I gotta ask this, awesome. um, I hear the accent. Mm -hmm. You don't say. <laughs> I hear it, I hear it, and, I, and I've got it, yeah, I do And it's say. strong right now, I just came from home, like, so I'm really yeah, in it now, I'm it, like, it's, right. in there, it's right? the strongest so, it's been for a while. Everyone, tell everyone, this, so where are you actually from? I'm from Birmingham, England, um, which is Birmingham. like two Shout hours from Birmingham. London. Shout out to Shout Birmingham. Birmingham, hey. Hey, what's up, Brummies, because that's what we call ourselves, Brummies. Yeah, we're the Brummies. But um, then I lived in London for 10 years, so I've got a bit of a Cockney accent sometimes. I, I feel like, I love yeah. it. I so love it's a little it. mix going I on, do you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I came to Spice eight, Girls. Yeah, yeah, a bit of Spice Girls. And then right. I came and now I'm an AT alien. So I'm just. And then, of course, my parents you, are Jamaican. Can you, can you talk that AT alien? I'm not going to embarrass myself because it probably won't be good today because, like I said, I'm. I'm still on my English kick right now. <laughs> but give me a month or so and I'll get back to yo, yo, Charlie, what's up, what's up? So, you know oh. what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can, you know, it's, you know. I knew it was I'm in just, there. Yeah, it's in there a little, but like, I ain't 18 mm. yet. So, um, yeah, I get judged wherever I go. They're like, that's not the real deal. So now it's a mixture of my parents are Jamaican, mm. I'm a Brummie, Cockney, come ATL. So, yeah. Cool. That's, that's Julie Dexter. No, Julie and Dexter. Jamaican. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, we'll come. That's first, that's the root of it all, you know. Mm -hmm. That's, um, you know, for me, even though I wasn't born there, that's in my blood, both my parents are Jamaican, and uh, I feel the spirit, you know. Jazz, Bob wow. one of my favorite artists. Jasmine was um, uh, showing me, just the other day, we was listening to, to your music. It was, uh, mm -hmm. it was, um, we was doing, watching YouTube, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we was, we was we watching you on YouTube. Because he, he said, oh, I can't wait to meet you. Yeah, I said, like, let me bring you up some stuff. <laughs> so she pulled, she pulled up some YouTube, and, you, and I was like, wow. Oh wow, thank you. This is mm -hmm. wonderful. She's gonna be on our show. Yeah, yeah, it's a couple of weeks, yeah. I know. She's gonna be here. Thank you. We thank are you. just ecstatic. Thank you. It's an honor <laughs> to be here with you. Doing your thing. AJ. Uh -huh. So so fun. Julie, tell us, um, siblings? I have two older brothers. Um, I'm the youngest of three. 
Um, I'm the rebel. I'm the only girl. I'm the rebel. I'm the one who moved, left the country, <laughs> came to America by myself. Do they sing? You know. No, they don't sing, but they're um, all what I call um, appreciators of music. My, my, my brother, my middle brother, he's a DJ, okay. so he plays mm -hmm. music. Uh -huh. And then I would say I got a lot of my taste. My um, <laughs> Got a lot. Yeah, I got a lot of taste. Like got a lot. <laughs> See, now you're going to be clowning me the whole time, right? <laughs> no, no, we're loving it, we're loving it. But I, got, I think my taste comes from him because I remember my brother used to um, he used to work, um, do a paper round. Do you have paper rounds here? What is I that? I don't know what paper says. Uh -huh. Paper boy? It, yeah, paper, paper boy, yeah. yeah. Okay, delivery. Yeah. Paper. Delivery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. They used to call it a paper round. Uh -huh. yeah. So, you know, he's delivered the papers. And it was the little shop where he used to pick up the papers from. They used to sell records, you know, back, like these same ones you have back mm -hmm. here, the little 45. So. Yep. They would have like a little selection in this shop, so he was always buying these records. And I remember at the time, um, After War was out, so he had all the, every single of Michael Jackson's that came out. Wow. Um, you know, he's a big Steel Pulse fan. He had great taste in music. Wow. Period. Mm -hmm. wow. So between him and my mom, he used to play like on a Sunday, for example. You know, we're eating rice and peas and chicken on a Sunday, and then mm. afterwards we'd be listening to some Bob and some De uh, Des um, you know, Dennis Brown mm -hmm. and so you know what I'm saying. When Marcia you said Bob, Griffiths. I know you were saying Bob Marley. He, First names, you already know what it is. It's like <laughs> Ella, course. Sarah. Right. Yeah. You know, you don't even have to say Bob Marley. Right. Yeah, we know, know who it is. We know. So, yeah, I think my, my family gave me my taste. Like, my palate is very, you know, it's wide because of the music that I heard. Mm -hmm. You know, right. and, and that's not just because of what they played, but because they were open. You know, we listened, I was into Duran Duran, Spando Ballet. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, Phil Spandau Collins. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. You know, like Duran, so Duran. much. It wasn't yes. a color. It wasn't just black music. It was just mm -hmm. the music that sounded mm -hmm. good, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so how did you get into jazz see my story see what happened was yeah. <laughs> yeah what's up with that so um okay so just to, so, so mm -hmm. that you understand the journey right. um you know i was i've always been into music from a young age mm -hmm. um, my first instrument if you really want to get the very first one is the recorder because that's how you learn music you learn to read and write um and then i picked up the violin and the clarinet so i was classically trained um up until i finished college and then um when i went to college i did a semester in uh, Virginia and Radford University mm -hmm. and um, wow. I took my clarinet Radford. over as a classical clarinetist and was doing my classical clarinet in my classical clarinet class mm -hmm. and next door there was this jazz class and I was like wow it just sounded so just intriguing to me for one mm -hmm. and two I was able to you know peek in and see what they were doing so you know I was able to go into the class and I took my clarinet with me and I'll never forget looking at the music because remember I was classically trained so I'm used to if you see the music you play what's there I remember seeing C triangle, um, sharp 11, B flat. I'm oh, like, you know, know, I'm like, that is. <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, you know, what notes do I play? Like, where are the notes? Like, give me the music so I can see what I'm going to play. Mm -hmm. And as you know, you know, when they put the chords and the symbol for jazz, they were improvising. Those were the changes that they were going to solo over. But I didn't get that at the time. So all that to say is I failed miserably in that class. I was terrible because I'm trying to play my clarinet and transfer what this symbol is and I don't even know the chords, mm -hmm. I don't know the changes because I just know you put a B, I play a B, you put a C, I play a C. <laughs> you put a C triangle, I'm supposed to know the chord for C major seven and, and improvise. Right. Okay. And jazz wasn't you like that. Was, yeah. Right. So yeah. what, what happened was I had it in my head. I knew what I wanted to play. I just couldn't transfer it. I was just struggling to play it on my clarinet. So I went back to finish my degree and I've stopped playing classical clarinet and took a jazz class and was like, I want to major in jazz vocal. And you know how that is. They look, mm -hmm. the classical department, the jazz department. <gasps> oh no, she's leaving classical. <laughs> you know, it wasn't like they encouraged it. They're like, well, what are you doing? Like, why would you leave? You know, there's no way you're going to be able to succeed. There's a whole other thing you can't. Anyway, all that to say, I got my degree. I majored in jazz voice. Mm. And from mm. there, I started going to uh, jam sessions. I started learning how to play with other musicians, um, learning standards, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I literally engrossed myself in um, Sarah Vaughan, Billy Holiday, Ella Fitzgerald, yes. the greats. Of course, Betty Carter, who I'd never heard of, but she just blew my mind the first time I heard her. Um, Diane Reeves, Nancy Wilson, um, Cassandra Wilson. They just, these were all people that I had never been introduced to. So imagine mm -hmm. hearing them for the first time, I'm like, whoa. Oh, yeah. no way. So, you yeah. know, I'm thinking singers were, um, you know, a Shaka Khan or a Whitney Houston, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I didn't know about how jazz is a whole, it's another vibration for me. And it, it fit me totally because I, I find it very spiritual, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Especially because mm -hmm. the whole thing of, you know, you sing the head and then you put your stamp on it, you, you make a solo and you, you, you make your statement of what you hear, how you interpret the music. And I just felt like that was more of who I was instead of trying to be this, 
you know, trying to imitate a Shaka or a Whitney or right. the people who, you know, I love them. I, I can't do what they do. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's, that's not my story. I didn't grow up in the church. I'm, right. You know, I didn't have an R&B background. Mm -hmm. I just wasn't as comfortable as I didn't consider myself a singer, should I say, listening to those people. Being a jazz singer is, is all, it's, it's almost all just like um, being, okay, like I'm a tenor player. Okay. All right. Um, playing jazz or whichever instrument you're playing, tenor, trumpet, whatever, uh, you actually, in, you can take that song, let's say my favorite thing. Mm -hmm. Everyone will play that song differently. Right, mm -hmm. right. How, how they hear. Right. They're, how they're, interpret they're, it. They're, they're putting their stamp on it. Yeah, that's yeah. the beauty of it. Uh, every singer will sing that song right. their way. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Every horn player will play that same song differently. Right. You know what it is, but right. they're, they're, in, they're improvising yeah. on, I mean, that's the, beauty on of it. The, 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 the front of it, the, the middle of it. Uh, they arrange it a certain way. They, they make it feel a certain way. Yes, yeah, uh, right. It's like with R and B songs, you want to try to imitate that person. Exactly. And, and people like want to hear don't that. Have those voices. They know that song and they want to hear it that way. The high so notes. Unless, they want to hear that high note. Yeah, hit don't the miss the high note. Way. Don't yep. miss the high note. Yep. That's the whole part of the song. The lead up to the high note. <laughs> and then waiting for it yeah. too. And then when you crash on that, oh, you can't sing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right away. That's <laughs> it. You out. And Get it. A, you don't know, race anymore. As a jazz singer or even a jazz player, you have you have. Um, Man, you have, uh, you have uh, artistic uh, freedom. Yes. Um, straight ahead. Oh, jazz. What do you call yeah. this? There's another word for that too. Artistic. That's it. Um, Arti to me, that's it. Well, that's artistic really it. freedom. Yeah, you know, it is. Straight ahead is basically kind of like do what you do what you feel. Right. Mm -hmm. Straight ahead is just you know it's like. Um, you just go, go with it. Right. Just go. It's like and you learn the tools. The tools yeah. are learning the changes, learning yeah. your scales, and then and you gotta to be get it all. And just go for it. But, but it's a discipline. It's a discipline behind that too. Of course. Of okay. course. A lot of Charlie folks. Parker. Yeah. Mm. Uh, train. Train. Thank you. Go on. Miles. So Miles she, said there are she can no tell you, mistakes in jazz. She can tell you. I've been listening to train all the time. Right. Jazz. She <laughs> right, can tell you. Right. I mean, the room yeah. listening to train. This guy is. Kicking me up the butt because he <laughs> did, he plays all the, all the all scales, over everything. everything. He's yeah. everywhere. He, He's complicated. What they play, what's amazing to me is that's what they hear. So to be able to hear this and then translate and then it, put it, that's mm -hmm. to, that's to me that's the power in itself. That what you hear and been able to. That's why you see, you know, right. you know, and horn players yeah. and they yes. try and they're like, oh, when they, yeah. you know, they don't get the idea out that they want because you know that they they already hearing it in their head and they just right. try to translate it and wow. they might not quite catch that note and they're like oh and then you know and they get back on it but i just love that that's like the realest thing to me when that happens because that means you're seeing them working it out mm -hmm. in real time mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. it's not like in the studio and you're like oh let me go back and do it again this is no. the real deal that's this, it. this is real time right here what you see is it's what, what you, you get, get. Mm -hmm. yeah now I, I saw you playing the piano do you play i mean listen I'm not a pianist. I would not insult anybody named pianist around <laughs> but you, here. But you play a little bit. But you I play. use it as a tool okay. to write, firstly, because I'm a writer. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, and I will say this to any singer, you know, not to become Herbie Hancock or not to be a guitarist and become a, um, you know, Pat Metheny or whatever, but as a tool mm -hmm. for writing, it's a necessity. You know, I can't imagine being an artist and not writing. I don't know. I feel like you're only doing half of the job mm -hmm. as being an artist. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like everybody has a voice. Everybody has something to say. It's up to you whether you want to think it's good or bad or not, but we should have something to say as an artist because it's, it's part of the journey. Exactly. So use a, a, either piano or guitar or get with a pianist or a guitarist and to help you write, I feel like that is the, the way forward. Yeah, you mm -hmm. learn. Um, which, yeah, you, which you, creates you. artistry, which creates yeah. your stamp, your sound, because no two people are going to write in the same right. exact yeah. way. Even if you're imitating somebody, you've got to come with your own lyric or is he going to get mm -hmm. dumped, sued for copyright, you know what I'm saying? Right. Or come with your own melody or you're going to get sued for copyright. You've got right. to come with something that's, that's from you. And that's when you can put your mark in the world and say, okay, this is me, this is my style, this is what I have to contribute to the world. Mm -hmm. you know? When I was in high school, um, I took mainly all music. I was a music major. Mm -hmm. And I had to take all music classes uh, from the jazz band to the senior band mm -hmm. to the, I was in the orchestra, not playing violin, but playing sax, right. and the chorus, uh -huh. and I had theory. You know what that is. Uh -huh. okay? yeah. In that class, we had to learn how to write. Yes. We had to understand what those chords are. We had right. to understand what those notes are. We had right. to understand uh, how to transfer my B-flat tenor sax, you know, I mean, what I'm reading and transferring it's, them notes, yeah, right, right. Okay? which I'm still, more or less, still learning, and I was telling you about mm -hmm. uh, the transfers. Uh, transpose, transpose, excuse me. Transpose right, right. certain notes, mm -hmm. okay? Because my B flat instrument, you know, is um, is I have to play like if you're playing a a, 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 a D, like when when someone says on the piano we're in concert D, mm -hmm. I have to be a step higher. Right. 
See, so I have to transpose that scale but a step higher. You know what, speaking of this so, transposing thing, babe, that's... <laughs> and that's what I do when I'm in the room. I'll I, be transposing stuff. I hear it's you. It's not easy. There was a debate going on Facebook today about oh, that. And I wanted to ask your opinion about that. Ask Julie that. She they knows. said um, this, this guy was going on about um, vocalists mm -hmm. wanting to sing a song that out of their out of their range that they just can't do and they, they want to they want to bring the change the key of the song from the original key right and my thing is a singer should be able to sing a song any way they want to right and so it's on the musician to learn how to transpose right you know uh, and it, that was the argument they he he was thinking no if uh, some songs you just need to leave alone you just can't sing <laughs> or or some songs sound better in that key and you should leave it there and don't bother it right i don't believe that he just didn't know how to put it in another case well, yeah, how do you feel the well, argument you know was. a lot of the times you know it depends on the musician too some musicians aren't good at playing stuff in the key other than the key it's in like you right. know how you get right. the real book you know that's when they say original key they're like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. thank god it's the i know they're key. so happy yeah because yeah. it's that's the key they've learned to, that's the key they've that's the key practiced over the year, you know, but, you know, to me, a, a true musician, if you say, you know what, I need a third up, you're yeah. supposed to be able to play Just do it. it. Yeah. That's how I see it. But the argument, I, I feel like when people are like, well, singers, you need to be able to sing in any key. Well, that's like saying, asking a soprano sax player to play a bass clarinet part. There you go. It's not physically possible. So if my range, if I'm a soprano singer, if I, my range is only up here, and you've got me singing down here, it's not physically possible for me to even produce those notes grossly. Mm -hmm. right. So you have to look up the, the, the capability of the singer grossly. Obviously, the singer needs to be able to, you know, the, the whole goal of a singer is to right. improve your range and to strengthen your voice. And ideally, you're, you have a, a certain range which spans at least, yeah. you know, alto soprano. But the fact of the matter is some singers sing very high up, some sing in the mid-range, some sing really low. So, mm -hmm. I mean, for example, Layla Hathaway, she's not a soprano singer. I can't imagine somebody asking her to sing way up way high up and the range. She's because here. It wouldn't no. sound she's like Layla Hathaway. That's right. Her voice and her tone is, is there. That's mm -hmm. right. And she can reach those notes and she'll hit those notes. But... Clearly, she she's going to choose in the key. She's going to choose where her voice is, mm -hmm. where it's her range, and where it sits. Her range is yeah. wherever and, it and is. I think every singer should at least have the option to be able to show themselves at their best. And mm -hmm. you struggle when you're not in your range. So, like I right. said, you can't yeah. physically ask a soprano sax player to play something that's written for bass clarinet because no. those notes aren't even on the instrument. So I always like that. So you know, as a vocalist, you're. It's an instrument at the end of the day. Yeah, so why is it that exactly. we have to change our instrument all of a sudden because <laughs> you because can't be bothered to can't change play. the key? Yeah, because you don't want to yeah, move. Exactly. Yeah. But you know? I do hear the, the agreement, I mean the argument, sorry, that certain songs do sound better in certain keys and it does change the tone when you change the key. It does and have it a does, different vibe. But you know what? But then it makes Most that song yours. That. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Then you then that singer can sing that song yeah, how do, they yeah, want exactly. to. And yeah, it may not feel good to you. Right. It may not sound all that great to you but that singer is comfortable right, right and right. I, to me and that's the one that's out front right right you know <laughs> yeah. I'm like, right so right right shouldn't that person yes, right. be yeah. catered to yes. more so than the people back here right <laughs> <laughs> i said they're not important I now you. i love I you. you know musicians yeah. can't we can't do it without like, each like other you, right. you when you, you know? got with the trio that you got with yes you, i mean you you heard about them i guess i don't know how you how you found them or they found you but you decide these people are the three that I want. Okay. Well, the, the, the um, promoter actually chose the band for me. Okay. You know, the promoter mm -hmm. was familiar with my music, so obviously right. she picked people who she thought were able to play my music. Right. Which, she, which and they were able show. to play it yeah. in your range. Yeah, because they, I gave them the music how it, how I sing it. Right. So it wasn't mm -hmm. a thing like if it's jazz standards, if I'd have just given them a list of you know satin doll lover man and didn't put the keys, then it could have been a problem. You oh, know yeah. what I'm saying? Oh, but yeah, when it's yeah, your yeah. original tunes and you. They're not going to change the key. They're going to learn it in, in the key it is. Okay. So the songs you did in Paris, were they covers or originals? Um, mostly originals. I did a few covers. I did um, Niles Barkley Crazy. Okay. And wow. um, as a request from my daughter, she said I don't do enough <laughs> songs for the young people. Mm. She was trying what? to get me to do Taylor Swift, but I was like, no, nah, I can't do Taylor Swift. I did uh, One Direction. <laughs> Drag oh, me down, oh nobody can drag me down. Yeah. One Direction song. And what was funny was the band, 
they, you know, they saw the list, so they was like, oh, she, there must be a, an arrangement or a difference. We're looking on YouTube for some <laughs> reggae version or something of this song, and we don't see nothing. I was like, I'm going to do it straight, like One Direction. They just was like, wow. <laughs> they couldn't believe it. It was actually really fun. I, you know, it's, I rarely do covers the mm -hmm. way they're done. I, you know, I make a point of making an arrangement or put it, like I said, making, making it my own, putting a stamp on it. If it's in 3-4, I'll do it in 4-4. Four, four. If it's slow, I'll do it fast. Or I might do it reggae, or you know, if it's a mm -hmm. ballad, I might swing it. I just make a point of making it my own. And this is probably one of the first times that I've done a cover the way it's done. I did it the same way. One Direction do it. Oh my goodness, I wish I could hear that. <laughs> yeah. It was I fun. I, I actually enjoyed I don't know the it. Song, and I'm wondering, you know, did you? Nobody, did... nobody, nobody can track me down. I mean, yeah, like, <laughs> you did it. Huh? Yeah, it was oh, like so you did it the way you did it the way they, the they would do it. The same way, yeah, okay. yeah. Uh -huh. Crazy, right? Oh man, how did it go over? They were loving it because one, they know it. It's, you know, yeah. it's a big song, but um, you know, I was actually enjoying doing it. Like yeah. I was like, "Gee, don't get too into this One Direction now. Yeah. This is this is not who you are." But right. I love good music, and that hook has had me from the beginning. Like certain songs, you know, mm -hmm. hooks get you. Yeah. And I found myself singing it. My kids sing it, so I was like, "I like it." So, so you liked it, so that yeah, that, yeah I liked there's nothing it. wrong with singing uh, something, uh, yeah. something for the youth. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So well, I, I, I tell you what. Cool. We want to hear something. Oh, you do? Yes, yeah, we, we do. do. We do. Wow. Wow. So, um, surprise us. I don't know what you're going to do, but we're, okay. we're looking forward to it. All righty. Ladies and gentlemen, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> Trash man didn't get my trash today Oh why, because they want more pay Buses and taxes want to raise and fare So they can help pollute the you by the clothes you wear Sway you a hippie if you have long hair Young politicians fighting for equality While people still die of poverty But that's what made
by Mongo Santa Maria. Dream of a land my soul is from. I hear a head stroke on a drum. Shades of delight, Coco, you. Rich as the night, Afro blue. Elegant boy, beautiful girl. Dancing for joy, delicate world. Shades of delight, Coco, you. Rich as the night. Afro blue to young lovers face to face with undulating grace gently sway and slip away to some secluded place shades of delight coco you rich as the night Afro blue whispering trees echo their sighs dance at the leaves Tender replies, shades of delight, Coco, you rich as the night, Afro blue. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that was out of sight. I know. Man, awesome. that's so funny. <laughs> well, thank you. Wow. Sure. So, so you, did some, you did a cover for us. Yeah, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan of covers. I mean, that's how you learn about songs. That's how you learn about songwriting, about mm -hmm. form. You have to study. You have to, you know, it's like going to the root. For you to be able to forward that art form and to be able to build on it, you've got to break down everything that you've learned. You know what I'm saying? Whether mm -hmm. it's a blues, whether it's a standard, you know what I mean? Break it down and figure out why, why you love the song so much. I was taught that. The songs that you love, break them down and, and figure out what components you like and what it is you like, because that will help you when you're trying to write your own songs or arrange your own songs or perform. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm yeah, have I'm you, advocate for that. Have you ever heard Shaka Khan's version of My Funny Valentine? Yes, I have. <laughs> is that like the yes. the most? Yes. Yeah, okay. it's pretty serious. It's serious. Especially Shaka. It's serious. Mm -hmm. You know, like, can she oh. do any wrong? No. No. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's a, that's a, that's yes. a standard, but the yes. way she did it? Yes. Mm -hmm. The way she did it. I love her singing jazz. Night in Tunisia. How about that one? What are you talking about? Oh, my God. Listen, <laughs> that right there. And what's the, have you ever heard, um, So I Walk? A little too fast. Oh yes, yes, yes. She's oh done that. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Chaka can do some yes. jazz. Because she can sing. She's a musician. She's a yes. singer. Ladies singer. Miss Jasmine. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Jasmine. That was there. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're in, no, we're in but, singers mode right here. But that song. Yeah. That's like one of my favorites by her. I know yeah. everybody likes my funny Valentine thing, oh my but goodness. when you hear her do, yeah. what's the name of that song? I can't even remember. But I know um, which song you're talking about. I can't remember the title. The end of the a love affair. Is that what the name of it? The is? end of a love affair. She can deliver oh, a song man. like no one else can. Yes. I mean, she, she's uh, she's to me an instrumentalist with a voice. Mm -hmm. you know? From when she was uh, with Rufus, mm -hmm. she was a powerhouse then. Mm -hmm. But she's really you no. Know, as she grew and 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 got wiser and got better. Oh, and I don't life. remember when she wasn't good. That's the thing. I mean, talk about, me, me neither. Like, but, when was when but, was Shaka but, not good? But you, was but there a time when she no, yeah, you know, but like everyone, a, everyone like gets horn, better. Yeah. Everyone gets better in time. Yeah, it's like clearly. Mine. I mean, she's, she's gotten, you know, it's like saying, it's like talking about legacy. Like, do you remember when legacy didn't sound good? Didn't sound no. good, no. Because coming know. out the box, yeah. legacy. Yeah. Oh, she was always uh, yes. fabulous. Uh, yeah. But, you know, as she got older, she got seasoned and even better. Yeah. Way better than she did. Yeah. than she was. Um, that's why I had mentioned My Funny Valentine because I've never heard anyone deliver a song yeah. like that it's, in it's, that way. It's good. She's, she's Who, who's your favorite singer? Singers, um, I think I mentioned one of them already, Betty Carter for sure. Mm -hmm. um, again, because she, you know, she's a singer, sing, she's a musician, you know, like she understands the music. You have to, I can't yeah. understand how a singer cannot be a part of the music. It's not just about you singing and doing your thing and the music behind you. That It's together, you know, it's intertwined. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 there's no way you can separate it. You know, it's a it's an entity in itself. Like mm -hmm. music, melody, lyric, harmony, the bassline, the beat. It's all together. You can't put one over here and one over there. So, I love what I call you know singers that to me you know exemplify musicianship. Right. So that would be Betty Carter, um, Nancy Wilson, 
Cassandra Wilson. Mm -hmm. um, what's up with the Wilsons now? I Wilsons, know. The and Cassandra, I love yes. Cassandra Wilson. And, and the space being as beautiful as the note, you know, not being afraid of space. You, mm -hmm. you ain't got to sing all over the song from right. top to bottom. Let it breathe. You let it breathe and let the space just be as beautiful as the note because mm -hmm. then you anticipate the note and you're ready for the note and when it comes and then it breathes again and you're just, you know, you you're... Can, you yeah. can ride on yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, I, I just it. love that. I don't feel... Like, you know, singers have to sing all over from the top to the bottom and show all your licks and all the skills you've learned, and all the riffs. And it's just one song now. Yeah? The riffing. Singers, please. Yeah, the riffing. I mean, don't don't try to prove to everybody that you can you can riff it's, it's forever. It's about being tasty. Layla Hathaway is a classic oh, example. Man. Tasty. She ain't riffing all the... When she does, you're like, ah, oh, you pass <laughs> out. And then she... Right. You know what I'm saying? But she'll sing the melody. She sings the song. You know what the song is. Yeah. You recognize the song because you recognize the melody, and then when she does put her little, you know, what she does, what mm -hmm. I call the Layla magic, then you're ready it's a for it. It's then a it's wrap, a, yeah. and she's tasty with it. She doesn't give too much. She just gives enough that she leaves you wanting more. That's right. the that's the key. Mm -hmm. Leave me wanting more. You know, that's 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 an art form in itself. You know, it's very easy to you know nerves or whatever it is. I'm guilty of it too. You feel like you got to you know give all your gut and let people be impressed. And know what it is you can do. Like, no, leave people wanting more. Just give them just enough to know that you're bad now. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you ain't got to overkill. Mm -hmm. It's one song. You got a whole gig. You know what I'm saying? You got like 12 more <laughs> songs to go. Right. Yeah, people give it yeah, all in that yes. first, first one or two songs, yeah. and then they had nothing left. Nothing left. So, yeah, Nancy Wilson go. for sure, um, Cassandra Wilson, Betty Carter. Um, and, you know, I love Marvin Gaye. I mm -hmm. love Marvin Gaye. I was getting ready to ask Gaye. you. Now, I know you're a fan of. A particular uh, X amount of uh, female uh, vocalists, but what about some male vocalists? Marvin um, Gaye, lyrically. You know, who, do, who do you like? Musically, who do you lyrically. To? Firstly, Bob Marley. That's that's what I call yeah. my musical bible. You know, I, I literally feel like I've learned. What about Nat? The word Nat King Cole. Yep, mm -hmm. fan of Nat King Cole too. But um, going back to Bob, it's like you know his music it gets more relevant for some reason. It's like the lyrics make the more lyrics. sense. We've been watching Bob Marley just the other night on television. Just the other night. Just the other you know, night. It, it takes. Time sometimes to understand um, yeah. um, who the cat fit, let them wear it. You know what I'm saying? You mm -hmm, have to have mm -hmm. a situation experience happen to you to really let that song ring true for you. You yeah. know, um, he's yeah, his his music is timeless. Joe Williams. Joe Williams. I'm not familiar with Joe Williams' music yeah. as much, so I'm yeah. not going to say like I've studied yeah. him. I know who he is, Listen but I haven't him. studied his music. He's, he's but um, love Marvin Gaye yeah. lyrically. Um, mm -hmm. I Sam feel Cook. like he was ahead of his Sam time. Cook was another. Uh, yeah, vocalist that yep. uh, had a, had a really Sam Cook also. cool sound. No, you're talking about vocals, vocalists that write, right? Uh, writers, yes, you know, because it's the, you the know, lyrics. It's yeah, yeah. you know, um, um, yeah. Marvin, Marvin wrote. Marvin wrote. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Marvin What's wrote. going yeah. on is one yeah, of the wrote, 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 baddest wrote. albums, you know, like in terms of relevant today. Probably more so now than it was when it came out. Mm -hmm. What's going on? Do you know what I'm saying? Mercy, mercy me. Um, yeah. Save the Children. Oh, Come on now. Yeah. Yeah, that's what, that was his conscious music. album. Yeah. When he, yes. he, all that stuff he wrote on that album. And I also think mm. Bob Marley uh, uh, wrote. Oh, he was all conscious. His, his, all his music, you know, was just so... What you call from, the from the beginning. Right, from the beginning. Yeah, he's woke. He wrote from... from from the inside out, from where he came from, his experiences, and he just wrote about it. Mm -hmm. Right. What do you call it? He's woke? Yeah, he's woke. Oh, Been I woke. Like that. Yeah, you know, like, I like woke artists, you know what I'm saying? Like, woke to me is where it's at, mm -hmm. because at the time when you're speaking or people are hearing your music, sometimes it goes over their head, and it's only later on you realize, you're like, man, oh, you know, the light bulb it. comes on, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Now you That's, get it. Yeah, but they were, they were ahead of their time. They woke before you are, because you wow. just, they're dancing and singing a lot, right. and then one day you sit and you listen to the lyric, and you're like, whoa. Wow. And it's a whole nother, you know, it's just another now, situation and now, appreciation. Now you can relate to it. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I, I well, love that. Julie, I know you got some original stuff. Um, how, how, if we wanted to uh, buy some of your product, how would we get it? Um, I'm on iTunes and Amazon. Um, you can, I've got my own website, juliedexter.com, of, of course, where you can mm -hmm. get information of where I'm performing. But um, iTunes, Amazon. Um, pretty much, you know, just Google me and I'm, people are selling my music where places I don't even know. You know how that goes. <laughs> I'm like, right. oh yeah, y'all just, y'all selling some Judy Dexter? <laughs> so, but yeah, the main place I would say now, because we're in the digital land, mm -hmm. is iTunes, or you can come to a show and get a physical CD and I will sign it for you. There yeah, you now that's question. Remember those things, the CDs? <laughs> yep, we still have those. Still have them. And, and, so, and so they can go on your, um, website. Website and Judy see Dexter. your itinerary. Yep. Okay. Find out where I'm going to be in the yeah, city next they, to you. You know, you're in Atlanta. Um, will you be in Atlanta for a minute, or are you going to be? 
on tour again? Uh, um, I'm going to be, you know, I'm back and forth. We've got are you shows performing coming in, up. In, in Atlanta area? Yep, I have any? a lot of shows coming up for the Atlanta Jazz Festival in that, in that month of May. Okay. They have what okay. they call the Neighborhood Jazz Series, mm -hmm. which is different parks around Atlanta. So I'm going to be doing a couple of dates, um, information's on my site, okay. um, which I like those because one, it's outside and you can bring the family, you know, it's like in the daytime mm -hmm. between like 12 and 4 maybe. And, you know, you can bring a, a, a blanket and you bring your picnic and it's just a family day out and the kids get to see live music, live musicians, you know, because after, after, after and they can't because it's a venue where children aren't allowed. So it's not often that children get to see the drummer playing you know i love when you see the kids come up and they're I looking know, at the drummer that's just the best will you be doing the wind down um not this, this year I'm, I'm not booked uh for wednesday wind down this year i've done it in previous years but not this year as of, as of yet oh. okay mm -hmm. and if it could change so just keep on the website juliedexter.com okay. find out when i'll be at the city yeah, yeah. Well, All right, you well there the first, you guys. have it everybody this is the fabulous julie dexter we were so glad to have you yeah. here thank you appreciate thank you, you having me julie thank you thank so you. much thank you. please thank check you. out her on Facebook. You can get all her information from her Facebook page. This has been another evening on At Home with AJ with Vision and Reality. Come together. Come together. Come together.